I'm Pardeep Jund. I'm a professor of cardiology and epidemiology from the University of Glasgow in Scotland, UK. So we performed a meta-analysis, an individual patient-level meta-analysis of the trials of mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists in heart failure. And the reason we did this is because while there's some very good evidence that mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists or MRAs work in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, there's less certain evidence about their benefit in mildly reduced or preserved ejection fraction heart failure. So they have a very strong indication in the guidelines for our heart failure with reduced ejection fraction heart failure, but there is weaker evidence and guideline recommendation for mildly reduced and no guideline recommendation for preserved ejection fraction heart failure. So with the release of the Fine Arts trial with phenenone, we revisited the efficacy of MRAs in heart failure. We took the four large randomised trials of MRAs in heart failure. So that's RALS with spironolactone and Emphasis HF with Eplernone, both in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. And then the top cat trial with spironolactone and the Fine Arts HF trial with phenerinone, both in heart failure with mildly reduced and preserved ejection fraction. And we took the individual level data from all of these trials and combined them together into one data set so that we could perform an individual patient level meta-analysis to look at the effect of the MRAs on a number of key clinical outcomes and also safety. Now the clinical outcomes we looked at, the primary outcome we looked at was cardiovascular death or time to first heart failure hospitalisation. We looked at those components and we looked at total heart failure hospitalisations as well as cardiovascular death by itself and all-cause mortality. And for safety, we looked at some of the key things that I think put people off using MRAs in clinical practice. That's high potassium or hyperkalemia. And also we looked at hypokalemia, low potassium, which can actually be just as dangerous as high potassium for our patients. What we found was that when we examined each of these trials together and we looked at the overall treatment estimate for MRAs and heart failure, we saw a reduction in the rate of cardiovascular death or heart failure hospitalisation, 23%. However, when we examined the treatment estimate and looked for an interaction between treatment and trial, we found a highly statistically significant interaction. And when we looked at that, what you can see is that the treatment effect in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction was 34%. And that was larger than the treatment benefit that we saw in the mildly reduced and preserved ejection fraction trials, but it was 13%, although it was still statistically significant. So what that tells us is that the efficacy of the MRAs is slightly bigger in the REF trials than it is in the mildly reduced and preserved trials. So looking forward and looking into all of the other outcomes, we saw the same pattern. So for total heart failure hospitalizations with and without cardiovascular death, heart failure hospitalizations alone, we saw significant reductions in both the reduced ejection fraction and mildly reduced and preserved ejection fraction groups. When we look at cardiovascular death, there was a significant reduction in the reduced ejection fraction groups, but the reduction in the mildly reduced and preserved ejection fraction groups did not reach statistical significance, and the same was seen with all-cause mortality. But we did see consistency of benefit over all of the subgroups that we examined. Now, I mentioned that we looked at safety, which is crucially important for using MRAs in heart failure. And the rate of hyperkalemia, so that's a high potassium, was higher in the MRA arms of each of the trials than in the placebo arms, as we might expect. But the rates of severe hyperkalemia, so a potassium of over 6, was actually very low. It was around 3%. Uh, and in the MRA groups, so it was 2.9% in the MRA groups overall versus one4 in the placebo groups. But more interestingly, the rate of hypokalemia, so that's potassium less than 3.5, was actually much higher than the rates of hyperkalemia. But being in an MRA reduced your risk of having hypokalemia by half or more. So quite significant reductions there. So we feel that the results of our MRA meta-analysis confirms the benefit of MRAs in heart failure. It shows that the steroidal MRAs, spironolactone and aplernone, are beneficial heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, and that the non-steroidal MRA, phenerinone, 
is beneficial in patients with preserved or mildly reduced ejection fracture heart failure. I think it also confirms that the incidence of the much feared side effects of MRAs of hyperkalemia is actually very low when you look at it and that these drugs actually reduce by over half the incidence of hypokalemia, low potassium, which is also very dangerous for our patients. So that's, a, I think, an important benefit of MRAs. So for us, I think these extend the use of MRAs into a wider population of patients with heart failure, indicating that if our patients have no contraindications, they should receive an appropriate MRA.